What's up workout crew? In today's video, I'm gonna share with you my experience with shin splints, how I overcame them, and what you can do now to prevent yourself from getting them. But first, cue that intro. Hey guys, before we get into today's video, I just want to give you a quick update on how my training is going. Uh, I remember two weekends ago, I did a 30K race and I said I wanted to try different nutrition. I wanted, I needed, I figured out that I needed to do more hills. So I have been doing that uh, with Team Row. We've been doing a lot more hill repeats, focusing on that. Uh, this weekend, I have an 18 mile long run and plan is to do it on a trail with lots of hills. So follow me on Strava, link is below so you can see how I do on that run. And then the following weekend, I'm gonna do another 25K race and I wanna see if I've gotten a little bit stronger, if I can push a little bit harder. And then also, instead of goose, I'm gonna try spring nutrition. Post the thing here. I'm using the Canterbury spring because I am a vegan. I've been vegan for 10 years. So I gotta make sure I have vegan products. Okay, so I'm using the Canterbury Spring Nutrition. Okay, so keep checking back here to see how my training is going and see how that race goes that following weekend. I'll keep you guys updated. All right, let's get into today's shin splint talk. <laughs> Back in my early years of running, when I was training for my first marathon, I had shin splints bad. I'd go out for my weekend long runs, and then afterwards, I felt like my shins just got hit by a baseball bat. I would immediately go straight in the icing and elevating my legs, and I would do that over the next two days a bunch of times. Then I'd go into my week of training praying they would hold up. It would make me so frustrated when I had to take time off to let them heal, and I even ran my first marathon with the shin splint pain. It was not comfortable. But after that, I stopped being stubborn, thinking they would heal on their own, and I would and I eventually went to a sports therapist chiropractor. I learned how to rehab my injury, learned that I was absorbing impact incorrectly, and better understood my footwear. Eight months later, I was able to finally run a long run with no pain, and I now have ran 300 miles, 400 Ks, and much more, never having that same shin pain. And remember, when we're talking about shin splints, we're talking about the pain you feel in between your shin bone and your calf muscle, anywhere in this area so let's get into what I have learned I'll show you three things you can do to prevent shin splints and then three things to, that you can do to rehab shin splints if you get them let's go shin splint prevention tip number one make sure your shoes fit and you tie your shoelaces for every run this tip is simple but it's often overlooked make sure you're getting shoes that are right for your feet if you have no clue how to pick the right shoe for your for you then go to your local shoe store and get fitted finding the right shoe for you is a process with a lot of trial and error but a shoe specialist can save you a lot of time and money then your shoelaces as a coach i hear this more than you would think coach i have shin splints and i ask are you tying your shoelaces for every run or workout or just slipping on your shoes and leaving your shoes tied then they say oh i never tie my shoelaces okay so you need to tie your shoelaces. If your shoes are too loose, your foot will move too much in your shoe, causing your toes to clench the bottom of your shoe, putting pressure on your shins. That pressure repeated step after step on a run will cause pain over time and even knee pain. So tie your shoelaces every time. Tip number two, make sure you're not adding mileage too fast. Overuse injuries are no joke. And if you're adding mileage too fast, the first signs of that is shin splints, IT bend syndrome, lower back pain, and even plantar fasciitis. When you're training for your first race, make sure you follow a running plan, join a running group, or get a coach. They will make sure you are not doing too much too quick. Tip number three, are you absorbing impact correctly? In one of my past videos, how to be an injury-free trail runner, which you could check out up here, I talked about the importance of a midfoot strike to make sure you're absorbing impact correctly. A heavy hill strike will eventually produce shin splints. It is inevitable. Let's cue up that video again to see what I'm talking about. All right, because for this demonstration, I just need you to stand up. And from here, just give me a little jump up and down. Okay, just a couple of seconds and stop there you just experienced absorbing impact correctly okay if you did that for an hour yeah your calves might be a little bit sore but you'd totally be fine okay and then also too when you're jumping like this your body has kind of a natural pogo stick you're landing on that midfoot your legs are contracting down and then from your achilles your calves your hamstrings quads glutes core everything's bringing you back up 
just like a pogo stick would. Okay, you're absorbing that impact correctly. And you could do this hour, maybe two hours, you would be fine. Now, what I want you to do, same thing, but land on your heels, right? Totally just completely wiped out that pogo stick feel. And if you did this for an hour, you'd probably have sore heels, sore lower back, and then maybe even a headache. You definitely would not be a happy person. So with that, in order to absorb impact while running, reel it back for just a second, running and walking are two different things. When you walk, there is always one foot on the ground when the other one steps. So it's okay to heel strike when you walk. But when you're running, it's uh, low intensity jumps. So there's always half a second where your whole body's off the ground. So you're gonna have to land on that midfoot so you can absorb that impact, so you can use that natural pogo stick in your body to help push you forward. So in order to go forward on this, you don't wanna lean forward from the waist because that'll promote that heel strike. You wanna lean forward from the ankle so you can lift the knee, plant the foot, so you can absorb that impact. Okay guys, now that we have covered how to prevent shin splints, let's talk about how to rehab shin splints if you have them. I'm gonna give you three tips here. Tip number one is icing. Okay, this is a simple one. We all know we, that we should do it. I recommend to do it at least twice a day until it gets better. I'm not a doctor, but you know, with my experience with shin splints, icing is always a great idea. You cool down the area, okay, and after you ice it for about 15 to 20 minutes, get up and move around. You get that blood flow through the area, flush out those toxins, inflammation, it'll help you heal faster getting blood to that area. Okay, so icing is a great idea. Get an ice pack or get a Ziploc bag, put ice in it, put a thin cloth over your shin, then put that ice on top of it, prop up your foot onto a chair, hang out there for about 15, 20 minutes, and then go about your day, okay? Um, always do it after your run as well if you do have shin splints, all right? Tip number one, let's go to tip number two. Tip number two is massaging. All right, guys, let's talk about this. So shin splint pain, you remember, we're talking about the shin splint pain that happens between your shin bone and your calf muscle right down in this tissue area here. If you have pain on this side of the shin here, um, that's usually just overuse. Maybe you did too much jumping, too much impact. Take a day off, that should clear up. But if you have the pain over here on this side in between the shin bone and the calf muscle, that's usually you've damaged the tissue, it's pulling away from the bone and a lot of inflammation and a lot of knots are starting to form in that area. Okay, this is where massaging becomes very important because you wanna make sure you release those knots and push that inflammation through so blood flow can get to that area and help you heal faster. So take your thumb, you're gonna start at the top Okay, right underneath that shin bone, right in between here and here. And I want you to just take that thumb and just shove it down your leg. Once you find that tender spot, I want you to take your thumb and just press into it really hard. Okay, now don't rub it out. Okay, don't try to massage it. Just press into it. It's gonna hurt. Okay, embrace that. Press into it. After about 30 seconds, I want you to flex the foot and then press it forward. Okay, and just move that foot up and down, just moving that muscle. You're gonna do that 10 times, kinda slowly. Don't go too fast on it. After you do it 10 times, okay, that's all you need to do in that moment, but you need to do it about three to four times every single day until that pain starts to go away. Okay, after you do that massage, doesn't hurt to take your foam roller, put it underneath those calves and make sure your calves are loose. Hamstrings, quads, okay? Because remember, tight muscles can cause injury during exercise, so you want everything loose. You don't want to be all knotted up, okay? So massaging is very important. If you have a lacrosse ball, that will help you as well, okay? It will help you press into it just a little bit more once you find that spot. You can, instead of your thumb, you can just use that lacrosse ball and press into it just like that. All right, guys. That's your tip number two for massaging. Get out there. All right guys, we're moving into tip number three, and this is probably the most important tip for rehabbing shin splints. So tip number three is, okay, rock tape and compression sleeves. Let's start with compression sleeves, okay? Now, what's happening here with shin splints, the bone is pulling away I mean, the muscle is pulling away from the bone, okay? And you wanna try to help prevent 
more tearing and that's where the sleeve or the rock tape comes in okay a compression sleeve or a compression sock you want to put that sleeve on on the side that hurts if it only hurts on one side make sure every run or workout you do you have the sleeve on and hopefully what this does is it becomes like a second muscle to help hold that muscle in place so hopefully you don't make do more damage to that muscle okay pretty much any compression sleeve or compression sock uh, will help it might not help a lot but it will help a little bit um, so if you have sleeves go for it I will link what I have down below so you guys can check it out also to you I have rock tape now I recommend rock tape over KT tape because I feel like after one use with KT tape it just comes off when you start sweating really bad they fall off rock tape you can leave on for about two to three days and it will not fall off. It's like duct tape, okay? Now, I do shave my legs whenever I put this stuff on because it hurts really bad when you decide to take it off, uh, but that's up to you. Now, what this is gonna do, this is stronger than a compression sleeve and this will work as, as working as a second muscle to help hold everything in place. And what you're gonna do, cut off a piece of rock tape, okay? And you're gonna place it here, right in between the bone and the calf muscle Okay, and once you place it on, can kind of rub it on there and just make sure that it's strong and secure. And then you're gonna take a second piece, find the spot where it's tender, and then you're gonna put that piece over the top, making an X with, I don't know if you can see it, hopefully you can see it, making an X with the rock tape. Okay, and that's gonna really help support that, that calf muscle and that muscle so it can heal faster and uh, hopefully not hopefully you won't damage it further when you go out and exercise all right so that's tip number three compression sleeves and rock tape all right guys that is our video for today if you have any questions on the information that i threw at you guys today please post in the comments down below okay uh these type of this type of information is what i'm passionate about and i'm all about helping you guys if you have any uh, topics you want me to cover to help you guys out a little bit more also post in the comments down below okay also quick announcement i have started a patreon page okay so if you feel like you just need a little bit more help in terms of creating a training plan uh, workouts for your needs uh, or just rehabbing an injury okay click on the link below join the patreon join the chat community in that and i can help you guys out and also too the people that join the patreon can also help you out guys thank you so much for being here Okay, I gotta get out there and run. Hope you guys are running and working out. Okay, and I'll see you back here next time. Stay epic and don't forget to be awesome. <laughs>